level. Let's see if we can tell what happened between him and Sellers. They barrel down into turn number one. And just, it looks like... Yeah, Juan Garcia just lost it on the inside there. I uh, can't tell who it was, but just lost it. And then obviously, oh, we have another car that comes in there. And then Jack Sellers comes to us. Just gotten out of the groove. And we'll get a look at it. Raz had just lost the lead and does get up out of the groove. Uh, you know, maybe trying too hard to get back what he had. The 18-year-old from Oregon had led so... Let's see if we can tell what happened, Parker. Yeah, Blaine Rocco was having a good run in the top 10. Oh, it seems like they blew a right front. That's Blaine's car, yeah. Yeah, definitely blew a right front there. Off of two and not really experienced much damage because there's a lot of room down there between where you race. Oh, as we come up here, he just got in that car on the outside <laughs> into the left rear, and that's going to knock the wheel almost out of your hands and, and force you into a spin. As you say, there might be a little bit of damage on the right front of that. Just now barreling down into turn one, that last car. We see Ooh. sparks. Yeah, that could be a tire there, Dave. I think that's uh, what we've seen a couple times this year, just that right front blowing. Didn't get in the wall too hard. Hey, Heather. I think this racetrack doesn't have the tire wear that we see at a lot of places, being this new asphalt, so you can get away with it. But one risk is when you come down on pit road with those hot, sticky tires, you can pick stuff off, off pit road, maybe a you know a bolt or something. It will puncture that tire, and you won't even know till you get on the racetrack. Good job by Dave Mayhew to uh, spin it out here. I think he may have wanted that caution to come, obviously, to be able to change this tire and come, try and come back to the field. Well, and the rule is that they get to change the tire in the position as long as they can prove that it's punctured, and I'm pretty sure that we're going to see that uh, based on what we've seen from the sparks and the inability to we'll see if we have a look at what happened to him coming off of turn four. It's going to go the oh. straight. Yeah, that's definitely a right front issue. Ouch. Uh, or, yeah, that's that's tough. That's exactly what you don't want to have happen. You're in the throttle hard, coming off the corner. Who was running 10th, and then this happened. Dave, another cut down right front tire here. Just another product of maybe picking something up off the racetrack, cutting that tire and having it happen in the wrong place. Uh, the restart line is right there. The second one is actually the restart line, and the bottom line, Parker, goes, but the top line, which is the control line, really doesn't. Yeah, I got to think uh, Partridge maybe jumped a little bit, and Gillen was caught off guard. When you see what happens here is that when they have that bottleneck, the 54 gets turned by the 14 to Levine, and then what happens is Perkins coming down the track. Levine's hood is up, as you'll see here. He can't see as he's, the 21 comes down the track, spinning out after he gets back in the throttle, and Levine goes over Perkins' hood, launching like a ramp, flipped over. A very low-speed incident, as we said, which is unusual, but obviously uh, Levine just couldn't see and, and had nowhere to go. That stack up on the outside, causing the 21 to spin. The 14 goes over, but thank... One thing that he does have on his side tonight is historically, he has a 3.3 average finish at tracks that are a third mile or shorter. He won at Roseville, which is a third mile track last season, and he also watch this the 19 gonna get right up on that wall oh Todd Gillen gets just knocked sideways right there that gets him three wide yeah and then Julia tries to get to the inside in the 54 and they're just gonna run out of space and Riley just gonna ride the coping like a skateboarder in a swimming pool and Riley got up into the fence Julia asked if it was her fault and Eric said she did get just a little too aggressive there on that restart she needs to be just a little more patient but he, but he does like to see how she is up on the wheel what do you think about that Frank would, would as a crew chief what would you yeah and you can see the second car there got turned He's sideways outside of Grayson Raz right here, and here comes the six of Cole Rouse, and he's got nowhere to go. And just hammers the left rear tire of the 06. Damages the left rear of the 06 and damage to the right. Rouse just drove into the corner a little bit too hot. Probably his car's not handling quite the way it was after all that damage on the right front. Look at him. He just runs right into the side of the 54 of Julia Landau. Aggression here a little. The interesting thing with caution. Number eight on the night. And cars continuing to spin. And it begins with the trying to force the issue on the bottom. You see him right here. The lap guy is trying to trying to go to the bottom instead of moving to the top and get out of his way. And and you know, I, I can't fault either one of them a lot. I think that the, the Rich DeLong should have moved to the top of the racetrack and given Crew Chief Jeff Schrader just came over the radio and calmed everybody down and said, All right, Ryan, just focus. All we need to do right here is regroup and get a good finish. We're gonna start on the inside, so that's good for us. We've got five laps to go. 
through the infield, but it's Eggleston who takes the win. Here's what happened to the 21. Oh, man, look at Parcher just trying to do everything he could to get as many spots back as he could. That's Let's get another look. He's about the fourth or fifth car coming into the top right of the screen there. And Cole Rouse, oh, Rouse is around first in the sixth car. And then Jesse, you see a couple cars back slamming on the brakes, and the 36 just comes around. So it was Cole who actually lost it first. Yeah. Gregson is just going to squeeze her down a little bit, which she's totally entitled to do. That's that's how you should race someone that's on the bottom, and she just maybe didn't anticipate him coming down so much. She had a little bit too much speed. Instead of maybe getting into him and allowing them both to move up the racetrack, which you'll decide to turn it down left and try to keep off him, got loose, lost the race car. Uh, really unfortunate for a good run she was having tonight. See that front end come down. She was hard on the brakes, as you would be here going into the turns, but uh, or they're just realigning it. Looks like it. Here is the lead right behind him. There's the 20, oh. and he gets contact from Perkins. Yeah, just Perkins is way under the rear end of his car, and you see Riley Herbst comes along and just clips Cole Moore there. R the race car here tonight. They're going to have to fix that. Here's another look, and they were pretty close going into the turn, but then Perkins just uh, drove it through and spun Cole Moore around in that 20. And Cole Moore had a large Ooh. gap between himself and the front cars. So you have to think maybe he got a little bit loose out of turn two and down into three, wasn't quite happy with the race car. I'm not sure because it seemed like Perkins was able to be way under hmm. the 20 car, which can tell me that. And trying to do it again this year. Here he is making that move on his teammate Gilliland for the win as he came by. Just a Let's take another look at it here, Parker. Oh, so it's actually David Mayhew doesn't go. Yes. So that's what it was. So obviously something happened to David Mayhew. Todd Gillen couldn't anticipate it, thinking the green flag is out. Everyone's going to get going. He gets checked up by David Mayhew. He has to back up, and the, the other guys run into him. And eventually, as I said before, there was nowhere to go for so many of the other. Part of him to Whoa. be here as a caution comes. So you get to the wall. Yeah, let's look here. Cole Rouse, oh, just comes off the curb. Loses the front end, gets in the left rear of Brian Wong, and he is just a passenger at that point into the tire barrier. Hard hit for Brian Wong, and really nothing he could do. He was giving uh, Cole Rouse was coming into him. Oh, and here's what happened to Neatland. Same situation almost. Just, just, uh, <laughs> just gets in the left rear and spins him around. Yeah, the 22 car is James Brincotti. Let the other cars and rejoin the position you were in. That is absolutely not how you want to rejoin. This has been a hectic restart. Cars spinning all over the racetrack. Very hectic. And I think it's a byproduct of being, as we keep saying, these. Well, I'm not surprised there's debris all over the place. No, and this is just, this is not the way you, I, I'm not sure how he ended up there on the inside of turn 11, but. Uh, you know, he may have just had too much speed, wasn't even able to cut over, but with Block Chase tried to roll some speed around the outside, didn't work, and I think he's going to have to get to the inside to make that work. Here's what happened to Julia, just under braking and around a win. Yeah, and that's easy to do at this late in the race on these old tires. You maybe have a little bit too much rear brake. He's got the curb records, Toyota headed again. Oh, oh and a race leader with a big Sideways. bobble. Gregson, huge bobble, and Chase Elliott sees the door swing wide open. Gregson tries to cut back. Away, we had a quick caution for debris, then get going again here on lap 62, and things are going to get interesting. Eggleston chose the outside line again as the caution comes out. He's leaders, let's see, watch this here. Well, as we see here, Gilland's going to the inside, Eggleston, and Parchers gets real close to the rear bumper of Gilland. Seems like he just might get into him a little bit. Gilland had already gotten in the corner really hard trying to get to the inside of Eggleston. As we look once again, just looks like, yeah, you know, Gillen's already maybe a little bit loose. He's gone in the corner pretty hard, but that little nudge from Partridge is just enough to send him around into his teammate at Chris Eggleston. Disaster. One more view, and around they go. We're coming right back. State Line Speedway for more k Pro Series West. Keep an eye on that car at the front of the pack. More right behind him. Oh, just gets down on the apron, turned it in too early there, and, and uh, more of the car wouldn't turn, and as they came to the center of the corner, spoiler to be able to race uh, in NASCAR. You cannot go out there without that rear spoiler on the car. Watching Cole Moore in that 20. Oh, seems like his teammate there, Jill Endauer, just 
gives it a little bit of a nudge in the center of the corner. She's the one that actually does a lot of that damage in the rear to his car, and that nudge was just enough to turn around. Gillen gets the inside three wide with Havens banging doors as they come down in the corner. Here these tight bull rings. He's got Grayson Raz to the inside, but watch Havens in the 83. I think that's where the contact comes, Parker. Yeah, Havens was falling back. He had been put in the center three wide two or three times to the set. And as he came here off turn four, they got just real tight. And then as they go down into turn one, Havens goes up the racetrack, maybe just overdrove a little bit, and Cole Rouse was sitting there. They came together, and Cole Rouse went around. You know, Parker, Julia Landauer's there. They all came together fighting for the same piece of real estate. See him all the way down on the apron here. Nothing that Gregson could do. He was being pushed into the middle there, pushed into Partridge, who gets spun out as the loser in all this. Gillen comes away with the lead. Very aggressive move, but you would expect it here for someone who's come all the way through the pack, feel it, driving very aggressively as Gillen has. Wow, look at it again. I mean, Gillen just went for it. He comes through clean, and Partridge spins around. It's a very optimistic move. It worked in his favor. Side by side, up the front straight away into the wall. Oh, oh my, what a finish. His two were just bumping and banging. Gregson did everything he should have done to force him out of the groove and to try and keep him off. But as he got there, it just seemed like when they hit the wall, Gregson was almost slowed down. His momentum was slowed down. And Gillen seems to keep just a nose ahead maybe as they get across the start-finish line. But we'll see what the official call is. Wow, yeah. look at that. Yeah, from that shot, it sure does look like there's more blue at the line than yellow. NASCAR's trying to take a look at the timing and scoring to figure it out. The outside lanes are kind of coming in here at Iowa Speedway, but this really stuck out to me when I ran the truck here earlier this year, and that was that this track is just really wore out in these Iowa winters, and you're able to go all over the racetrack and use the momentum of the high line to get big runs as they come three wide. Whoa, oh, it man, that bit. is oh. not going to work out at all. The number six of Cole Rouse just shoving that machine through there literally and his teammate ryan partridge squeezes through as well and they're still not done they're still side by side you know a lot of times an owner will tell you race as hard as you want just don't wreck each other or not even touch each other and they just broke that cardinal rule of racing teammates there al bush and chase elliott are all former winners here at iowa in the k&m pro series and here's gregson scraping that wall well, it's exactly what I thought it was. Just you can see all that dirt and debris from the tires up right next to the wall. He got a little too high trying to push that lane up, which you'll do as a driver. Sometimes there's just a little more grip the higher you go, closer to those marbles. And if you can force those marbles out as all the cars move up the racetrack, you can just continually find more grip where there isn't rubber. But eventually, sometimes you get a little too high. And here he is going in the corner. He's slowing down, slowing down. And right there, right in the middle of the corner, you see the sparks. It's on the splitter right there. And the right front tire has got a lot of smoke coming out of it. Cole Rouse on the bottom. Let's see the replay. Watch the front of the car right here drop down. Watch it. It's, see how hard it drops down right there? She really gets on the brakes incredibly hard, probably harder than she had earlier this evening. And trying to pass Cole. Let's we'll see the replay right here. And here he is. He's, he, Todd looks like he's going up the outside. All of a sudden, at the last minute, he realizes the 14's got a soft tire. He cuts underneath him and avoids a, a major problem right there for Todd Gilliland. From Vanessa Robinson on the 84 of Rich DeLong. Doesn't take much. Doesn't take much. Here it is right here. Look. Right-hand side of your screen up top. Just a little bit of a bump. It looks like just a slight bump, like, like he didn't get on the gas quite soon enough. Uh, you know, he might have pushed up a little bit in the corner. She wasn't expecting it. 21, and her next victim, if you will, will be the six of Cole Rouse. But we're going to make some turns here. Let's see what happens to Sal. You can see he's down on the inside of another car there. Maybe that kind of that pinching off effect, Frank, that you sometimes see right down on the lowest line. Yeah. It... Making his championship. Here's another look. And you see Chris Eggleston on the bottom right here. He's got a little, good move. He gets in the gas, gets a little bit loose. He has to turn the wheel back to the right, and when he does, he just barely catches his teammate, Todd Gilliland. Certainly not an intentional move at all on his part. He was a little anxious right there. Watch it right here, Dave. See the back of the car start to come around? Mm -hmm. Now he turns back to the right and catches him. And watch Partridge right here. Pow! He's the one that really helps Eggleston on around, and that's a tough thing for the third-place guy, right, Frank? Because you don't want to get yourself more involved in that than you have to. Let's watch the replay. I don't see... 
See, he, he turned in a little bit right there, but he did not come across the nose of the 21. It did, it did not look like contact to me. And there just wasn't any grip out there for him. We talked about how they have uh, worked on the outside line here a little bit and helped Cole Rouse right here. Now, and it just looks like he's a little bit too aggressive. He's trying to get to the bottom in front of Blaine Perkins. And instead of trying to go up, the, stay in the, in the second groove a little bit and beat him off turn two, he got a little aggressive with the wheel, pulled it down a little bit harder than he probably should have. And that thing everybody else is going to be learning, and he's not going to learn a thing. And you'll see the smoke. His day was done. Yeah, it definitely looks like a uh, engine problem, something in the rear end, uh, definitely something catastrophic where it doesn't look like they're going to be able to get back out there. Runoff, but you got to be careful with your tires. Uh, it's really easy to get a flat tire here at Utah. Yeah, we see Riley Herbst off the racetrack, throwing a lot of debris on the racetrack, and then behind him, Looked like maybe he, he saw that and lifted a little bit. Maybe yeah. the guy behind him got into the back of him and got him spun around. Spurgeon was able to gather it back up. Oh, oh. Partridge. Looks like there might have oh, been a, yeah, there's, there's a car. Yeah, there's two cars. One of them is I.O. In the middle of the first segment here. That's a very aggressive move late getting into that corner. 21 car of Lane Perkins. He just made a real aggressive move. There's no way that Julia could have expected he was going to be there, and Julia went around. Well, and from the spotter's standpoint, too, I mean, there, there can't be that great of an angle where the spotters are located here today. Um, getting into that corner, a lot of it's on, on your mirror as a driver and you just paying attention. But like you said, Julia didn't stand a chance there with the 21 uh, plugging that hole. To apply the pressure here, too, and here's Vegas spinning out in the 30. Yeah, it looks like he tried to accelerate off that corner and just got the back end coming around on him and couldn't keep up with it. For sure, let's go back and take a look at it. He comes to the inside here, Jeff, and gets right up underneath him. Yeah, that pushed Todd up off, out of the racetrack a little bit, slowed his speed down, and now Noah makes an extremely aggressive move. Todd tries to block, gets up on the curve, gets in the side of Todd. I don't know how they both don't spin out right here, especially Todd way up in all that dirt. He still maintained control. So after they made contact, great job by both drivers not to spin out. Yeah, you can see Todd right there just struggling, trying to get... There's really no grip out there in the dirt. There's nothing he can do at this point. He's just trying to come home second. Let's see here. Well, he was looking to the inside. Yeah, he was. And then he just, he got into the back of him. I mean, uh, you know, again, 19, Riley Herbst could have been slowing down a little bit too much, but Noah Gregson's got a break. But yeah, he's been in a few incidents. He got spun out early by Noah Gregson, and then he's been a little too aggressive coming up. Right, here's what our camera saw. Yeah, no, that actually, Jesse Wuji did nothing wrong. He was in the outside lane right there. Looked to me. Herps charging hard like, from the inside. Looked to me like Riley just got up, got off the bottom a little bit, pushed up a little bit, and ha didn't have enough racetrack there. Getting into the corner right there. Let's watch. He gets sideways. Watch the back of his car. See him turn sideways right there, Dave? He goes up the racetrack to save his car, and he gets into Cole Rouse. Rouse around brings out another caution here at the quarter mile. Here's another look. Yeah, here's another look. You're going to see Chris Eggleston. He, see right there? He gets in the brakes a little bit right there, and he gets his back end of his car slide sideways. He has to turn back to the right, and when he does, he catches Cole Rouse barely in the left rear corner. Nicole Bihar sneaking through down on the inside there in the 33. We'll see how they line him up as we get ready to come back to green. But, yeah, he'll, uh, he'll be going over to Cole afterwards saying, ah, you know, I wanted to buy you, but I didn't mean to do that. Yeah, my bad. He, he's just going to say my bad. I mean, he was really, you can see that the outside does have more grip right now. It's Down into turn one, left of your screen. Yeah, hard to see. Oh, it's Ron Norman. It's Ron Norman in the 30. And uh, Ron was on the receiving end a little earlier. Yeah, Ron certainly didn't like what had happened to him earlier, evidently. And he decided to uh, have a little retribution there with Raleigh Herbst. Wow, what an impact right there. High on the wall was Herbst, but thankfully those water barrels. Yeah, he's going to have a little bit of track bar issues on that left rear, possibly. Where he goes by, he's already been by, and it looks like that blue and yellow 07 of Colton Nelson might have been the culprit. Yeah, right in the middle of the screen right there, you see Blaine Perkins getting to the outside wall, and then it looks like, is that Cole Utah with the blown engines? He's just had a tough tough time here lately. Here's the three wide you were talking about. Be her on the inside. It's Grayson Raz on the inside that kind of gets into Landauer, and then Landauer pretty much gets into the 50. Yeah, and remember, they're, they're teammates right there, so that's a tough deal to swallow, tough pill to swallow. It looks like Bihar may have even had a little contact on the way by. She did a really nice job of getting stopped right there, figuring out where, let's watch it right here. 
See, there's Grayson Rouse on the bottom. He's in there, and Julia Landar comes down a little bit, and she's got to go back up the racetrack a little bit to, when she realizes that Grayson Rouse is there. I don't think she realized it to begin with. When she moved back up the racetrack, she got into Chris Eggle. Three and four. Let's see how that went. And here he is. Well, he tries the crossover move. Todd Gilliland, he, he comes underneath him right there, and you see him start to get a little bit loose at the back of the back of the car. I can't see where the right, right rear tire is. It looks like it's up right there. What might have been causing the nine to go around so quickly. Now, the 16, good job collecting it. Um, Gilliland's seen this movie before, coming to the finish of a race, right? Remember New Smyrna? It was strange the way it ended here, but we saw the confirmation, the checker and the yellow there, confirming that Gilliland is indeed the winner. You know what, I'll give a lot of credit here to Ryan Partridge right here, because right now, when he goes into the corner right here and he's getting loose underneath, he could, he really could have not turned his wheel to the left that much. He could have turned back to the right and drove into the side of Todd Gilliland to hold Folded. Well, here goes Colton Nelson in the 07. He's up high for some reason. He looks oh, like he's got a problem, Ralph. Oh, boy, yep. Yeah, he's almost stopped on the racetrack right there, Ralph. And Gregson had nowhere to go. He's lucky that wasn't a bigger deal. He could have just wow. center punched and turned into a real mess and then just gets caught up in this one. It looks like here's John on the bottom right here. Pretty low right there. Again, we talked about that little bit of dampness right there. Hard to see whether he'd got his left left rear maybe in a little bit of wet wet stuff, and he was able to just spun him right around. Yeah, I think he just got on the gas, and it just around it went, right? Let's just take what we can get here tonight. And Aggleston comes up to battle. The 50 has the lead by a nose. And boy, would he like to end the year on something positive. Boy, these lap cars are really Three making it difficult. Coming off a two. Eggleston shaves the doors on the 06 car of Wood. And our Winston West Series, and you saw his age, 72 years old. Wow, that's impressive. Yeah, he just gets in the gas right there. Nobody gets in him. That looks like the Julia Landauer just making a pass on him. Here they come down the front straightaway, and you can see Gillen had a nose in there. Certainly wasn't up to his door. No, he wasn't up to his door, but Ryan Patrick moved down trying to get by Grayson Ross right there. If you really look at the replay, you know, Todd was in there. Uh, I don't think that Ryan Patrick is expecting him to be in there. He was making a move through lap traffic, but right there, he definitely tells Todd Gilliland, Bud, I want to win this race tonight. You're racing for a championship. I'm racing for the race win. Don't, don't touch my rear bumper anymore tonight. You can see he pushed him all the way up into Grayson Raz and watched as they come down to the next corner. My Partridge just shoves him right down into the turn. And he crinkles that left rear sheet metal extensive. Races with David actually wrenching for him. Yeah, David actually was the crew chief when, when Butch won the championship there, I think in 97. Look at Julia Landauer getting around the outside of her teammate here. The great thing for Todd now with the championship in the bag, he can focus on racing now. His car right now has been, it hasn't looked as good as it was early in the year. Watch as they come up off of four. Looks like he loses track a little bit. He's trying to get past Julia Landauer on the outside. She carries her momentum, carries her out a little bit, and he gets into the outside wall, not really realizing where he was at. Yeah, that's unfortunate late in the race. Watch here in the middle of three and four. Yeah, it looks like Bill Kahn gets into the back of John Wood right there. Doesn't have a lot of damage until he goes to pull away right here, and then he actually, right there, he really makes some damage to the right, contact to the right.